Today we're going to start talking about a different subject, but one that you've talked about before in the primary grades. We're going to explore how to go about locating items in a grid system. Often when we look at maps, they're in a grid. This is super helpful when we try when we're trying to locate an area or pinpoint something on a map when you're unable to actually point to it for the other person. Right now is a perfect example of that. I'm in my home and you're in yours, so you can't see where I point on a map, but Using the grid system, I could tell you exactly where I want you to look. Notice that both of these maps have one side that is letters and one side that is numbers. So when I give a coordinate, which is the spot I want you to look, it's going to consist of both a letter and a number. In the world map, I want to show you where the country Iceland is, but I can't use in my hands. So I could say the country Iceland is located at A4. And if you look to that section of the grid, you will be able to know exactly where Iceland is. So how exactly do we use this system? Well, the first thing we need to know is that almost all grid systems start at the bottom left. On mine, I have the letters down at the bottom. This means that each letter represents a whole column on the grid. Imagine the letter A going all the way up its column. So each of those squares is also called A. The letter B has its own column, where each of the squares above it are also called B. And the same goes for all the other columns. My grid stops at E, but even if it continued, this rule would still apply. Going up the left side is where we'll find the numbers, again, starting in the bottom left. This time, each number represents a whole row. So imagine the ones all being in the first row, the twos being in the second row, the threes being in the fourth, third row, the fours being in the fourth row, and the fives being in the fifth row. So each of these numbers has a whole row to itself. So how do we place items on the grid? Let's look at an example. Let's say I wanted to place a purple sun at A3. I look down and find my letter A, so I know it will have to go somewhere in this column. Then I look and I find the number three, and I know it has to be in this row. Where they overlap is where my sun needs to be located, at A3. Now, a lightning bolt at E5. I look for the E, follow that column, look for the five, follow that row, and where they overlap is where I'm gonna put my lightning bolt, at E5. Now that we remember how to properly place items on a grid or find the coordinates, we're going to talk about how we describe movement on a grid. If we look here, we have a tent at B2 and an umbrella at E2. To get from the tent to the umbrella, we're not going to count all the squares. We're only going to count how many movements we do, just like in a just like when you move a piece in a board game. So, to get from B2 to E2, it takes one, two, three moves. The same is true even when it's not a straight line. If we were, if this grid was the map of a mall and we had a shoe store at B2 and we wanted to get to the optometrist, which is an eye doctor, at D1, I have to count each individual move. One, two, three, four, five. So from B2 to D1 is five moves on the grid. 